welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, I'm Vanessa Semina and welcome to the fam. So guys, today's pick a card reading is all about the next unexpected changes that are coming into your life. And in order to help you figure out exactly what those changes are for you, I have prepared four groups that you can choose from and I would like you to pick one of these four groups intuitively. So I would recommend that you pick whichever crystal that you feel resonates with amazing change for you. You may feel as though the celestite resonates with really calming, amazing energy when it comes to change whereas for instance the carnelian imbues fire and action so pick according to the type of change that you desire to obtain in your life and that you feel really resonates with your journey right now so the four groups that I have prepared for you are as follows we have the celestite we have the carnelian we have the amethyst as well as the black tourmaline and the links to all of the four groups can be found down below in the description box as well as pinned to the comment section so you can click your group and be fast forwarded to your reading and of course if you are not yet subscribed to the channel make sure that you hit that subscribe button to never miss another tarot reading so to keep the intro nice and short let's jump straight into the readings i will be starting off with the celestite and to all my other fabulous groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Celestite group number one. Let's do a quick close-up of this beautiful crystal. Here we go. I absolutely love just how multifaceted the stone is and how many little glimmering and shimmering details that this stone brings with us. This is a stone that suggests calmness as well as just overall relieving yourself from anxiety and any type of pain, both physical and mental. But let's move into your reading. First and foremost, we have the Dawn of Rings. So an unexpected big change having to do with the Dawn of Rings. This is somebody of an earth sign, okay? Somebody who has very grounded energy, who is very diligent and is reflective of the world as well as themselves. So the Dawn of Rings is somebody that might be entering your life or might already be in your life. Just know that they're bringing change with them in the sense of making you feel more calm, more at ease, at peace, and just overall well supported. So awesome change in correspondence to the Dawn of Rings. Next up, we have the Three of Wands. So the Three of Wands, I do see here a certain element of opposition, okay? A certain element of fighting something. So in correlation to the Dawn of Rings, I do see that along with this change that the Dawn of Rings person might bring into your life, that this individual may channel for you, you may kind of be fighting it at first, okay? So maybe you're fighting the feeling of letting somebody new in because you've been hurt so many times so of course you're weary you're very um careful cautious when it comes to letting new people into your life but it could also be because you have a little more feelings for this person that is slowly but surely changing you for the better and maybe you don't really want to admit those feelings to yourself or to them so for instance even if we are already in a situationship or full-blown relationship it can still feel um, very raw and real when we're going through these phases where we feel so much love, but it can still be a little bit embarrassing to admit it or even say it because it's like you're making yourself vulnerable. Even if the person, it's already clear that you both like one another, you don't want to go that extra mile to make yourself extra vulnerable now, do you? Next up, we have the Spirit of Cups. So in the Spirit of Cups, one thing that I do see here is just this need to let out emotions, this need to really communicate how you feel, what's going on within you, and be creative with it. Don't be afraid about how you show your love. Be creative in an approach that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. That is what I see in correlation to the three of wands, okay? So when it's very hard for you to show people how much you care, how much you love, how much you really do want them also to accept you and to like you, um, allow yourself to use a very playful way, a very creative way to do so, and a way that 
is almost like a child would do, you know? Not like in a creepy way, but just saying like, oh, you're awesome, or oh, I really love you, oh, you're, like you're the best, that's what I mean. Not like clinging on to somebody after two seconds of knowing them, don't get me wrong, group number one. But just in a very fun way, um, showing people how much you care and keeping it very lighthearted. So it could always kind of be a joke, but it could also be real, but you know what I mean, like finding that fine balance that makes everybody feel comfortable, both you, the person who you're trying to show how much you care, and just overall making the situation fun and warm and inviting. Next up, we have the unakite. So one thing that I see here is living in the now happens so much more for you, okay? Living in the now is something that you've been craving, something that you've been after for a long time. And you've asked yourself so much, like how do people live in the now? How do people do this? Like, especially when you turn on the TV or you scroll through your feeds and you see all of these people like living so in the moment and you want a piece of that cake. And I see you finally figuring out the recipe to how to get there, how to live more in the moment. Next up, we have the clear quartz. So in correspondence to the Unakite, I see that a big, amazing, unexpected change for you is that you feel you can see life so much more clearly. And that's not because you're gaining more knowledge. It's more of an understanding of the absence of the amount of knowledge that you have. More of an understanding that life is such a complex structure, such a complex thing, that the more you know, the more you figure out, it's like you realize that you actually know so little. So it's the more that you put yourself out there, the more you know that you don't know anything at all. And that is what I see here in the clear quartz that is very humbling, okay? It brings a feeling that is not only humbling, but also in a way allows you to not always take everything so seriously and to know that there's so many chances, there are limitless amounts of chances to learn, to grow, and to become the person you want to be. So being okay with making more mistakes. Then we have the Rado cross eyed So in the Rado cross eyed I see here that a big change that's coming towards you is really a big growth in your confidence, a big growth in understanding and knowing your self-worth. Just as the Rado cross eyed is just such an expressive, wonderful, beautiful stone, just coming to this understanding that you are lovable, you are worthy, and actually feeling it, you know, not just saying it and feeling cringy about it, but saying it and feeling like, yeah, this is true, not feeling like a fake when you're saying that. And in correspondence to the celestite, I do truly feel that the celestite is the type of energy that gives you this calmness and that lessens your anxiety to be able to embrace that, just the presence of the energy of this crystal in your life. I have a link down below in the description box. This is actually a celestite from my online crystal store. So they're all about this size, usually a little bit bigger, and you can find it down below if you really resonated with the stone and you're looking for a source as to where you can get a high quality celestite that will be with you in a good amount of time. Well, two days. <laughs> Next up, we have the Hunter Moon. So in the Hunter Moon, one thing that I can see as a big, unexpected, amazing change is abundance coming towards you. And the Hunter Moon, let me show you right here. It is just full of these beautiful, amazing animals. So leave a little, should we say like, Actually, I love pigs. There's like a little wild pig down here. Let's leave a little pig emoji down below in the comment section if you made it to this point of the reading and just to let others know that you chose group number one. So the hunter moon is again, all about that abundance coming towards you and being supported and supported not necessarily only by human beings, but maybe also by your cat, by your dog, you know, just really feeling the love when it comes to that support and abundance. So feeling the love is one thing that gives you, again, the sense of feeding into your self-worth, feeding into your self-love, and having this person in your life, the Dawn of Rings, who is either still coming into your life or already in your life at the present moment. I see here in the Hunter Moon that that just, again, gives you a sense of abundance and a sense of love being all around you. Next up, we have the Waxing Give Us Four. So 
really springing out of bed in the morning and this may be something that's very unusual for you where you're just like girl like don't 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 kid right now i i don't do that i like to sleep and i get that okay i love to sleep i love to rest i love to nap i love all of it but i do see here in the waxing gimmicks for that there is a lot of this ecstatic energy a lot of this energy that just gets you going gets you up early in the morning and just gets you out of bed at an early hour not because you have to but because you really want to but because you're really excited for what's next to come you're really excited for what you're working on and you're just all over your projects be it at work be it in your personal life overall you just can't wait to accomplish things you just can't wait to take the divine opportunities that are being presented to you and putting funneling your creative energy right into them next up we have the badger spirit so be fearless and bold and in correspondence to this reading and the big changes that are coming for you that you didn't expect um, is that through loving yourself more through understanding your worth to the degree of not putting yourself down of being able to say how worthy you are without cringing, without feeling like it's over the top. I see here in the Badger Spirit that that brings stability into your part that is courageous, okay? The part of you that is courageous, the part of you that is fearless, the part of you that is bold. So know that you're funneling energy straight into that and in correspondence to the waxing give us four, this is really a duo that is unstoppable. This is really a combination that allows for you to not only get things done, but also feel as though you just really are in a place where you want to get things done, where you're fearless, where you're bold, where nothing can go wrong, okay? Failure is not an option with this combination, which is just like an awesome change in your demeanor that is coming towards you and that ultimately will launch you towards an increase in success. Next up, we have the electric eel spirit. So a lot of this has to do with great ideas. So I would recommend for you, group number one, never walk around without either like your notes app. Let's just focus this card real quick. Here we go. Never walk around without either your notes app or just overall like a notebook where you can write things, write down your ideas and make sure that you're really just keeping them safe. Okay, that is one thing that I see is invaluable for you so that you can bring those ideas to life, right? As we have in the electric eel spirit, but you first need to capture them. You first need to get a good grip of them. In the number 24, we have a very balanced number. We have a number that just overall shows that Bringing your ideas to life is not something that needs to freak you out. It's not something that needs to scare you. It's actually quite the opposite. Once you start working on it, it becomes second nature to you to be fearless, to be fearless, <laughs> to be fearless, to be bold, and to go for what it is that you desire. So group number one, and this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you found it inspiring. I hope that you found it insightful and that it gave you motivation as well as peace of mind for what is to come next. I hope you're staying safe and doing amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this sacred space with me today and I'll see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello group number two and welcome to your reading. So you chose the carnelian. Let's do a quick close-up of this beautiful gem. Here we go. It is just so gorgeous. The carnelian is a stone that brings more life force as well as vitality into your life and it is just overall a stone that resonates very strongly with phallic energy, with energy that is masculine and allows you to balance out too much feminine energy but let's move straight into your reading to figure out what big unexpected changes are coming towards you so first and foremost we have the eight of swords in the eight of swords i see you overcoming fears that you didn't expect to overcome so quickly group number two i smell a procrastinator okay i smell somebody who has been procrastinating certain things okay i can smell it right through the screen and overcoming those fears and overcoming those things you've been procrastinating due to this sense of not wanting to fail at it or not wanting to tackle it because it's just so big of a task to you and you don't want to screw it up that it's been scary but i do see here in the eight of swords that you're finally overcoming those fears you're 
finally just getting those things done that you know you've been setting aside for way too long. So self-entrapment and conflict within yourself when it comes to that. Finally coming to a resolution. Next up we have the Three of Wands and in the Three of Wands I see development, I see opportunity, I see you moving forward as well as paving a new and fresh way for yourself. So this is indeed a big unexpected change because again when you procrastinate you expect to procrastinate for a good amount of time. I mean I am a expert procrastinator in certain things, especially things that scare me. So I understand that when you start to procrastinate, you have a plan, you have an itinerary for that procrastination. And when you have to just deal with it head on sooner for whatever reason you're forced to or something just gets you where you're like, okay, if I don't do this, I'm not going to be able to take these wonderful opportunities coming towards me. Um, you can be kind of like a little bit in conflict with yourself, right? But at the end of the day, there is nobody who's ever overcome procrastination, developed more opportunities, paved a new path for themselves who said, oh, that was so terrible. I wish I could go back to procrastination, like said no one ever. So this is some amazing change coming towards you. Next up, we have the Queen of Swords. So I do see here a very lovely Queen of Air having a great effect in your life. So this queen of air is somebody who has a lot of air sign energy within their chart. They're very smart, okay? They're the type of person who is productive and overall when it comes to intelligence, that's something that's important to them. And that's most likely also why they're having this impact on you because you're fascinated by any intelligent conversation that you can have, things that can go deeper that can go below surface levels and I see here in the Queen of Swords that somebody who is very confident, self-reliant and has an interesting perspective, an interesting viewpoint of the world is going to captivate your energy, captivate your attention and inspire you to pave this new way, inspire you to pave these new paths of opportunity for yourself. Then we have the King of Wands. So in the King of Wands, again, leadership as well as success is something that really just inspires you. Seeing other people doing it, seeing other people accomplishing certain things. So allow yourself to let this change you for the better, to be um, a vehicle, a tool for change that is positive because listening to podcasts or watching documentaries, um, tuning into interviews, reading books by people who inspire you, who just kind of made things happen is exactly what you need, is exactly the kind of life force to push forward that will allow you to pave all of these new ways and opportunities. Next up we have the garnet, so igniting your passion. Group number two, it's important for you to not just focus on the goal, it's important for you to remind yourself that life is all about the journey. The goal is great to reach, but you spend really 99% of your time on the journey, so make sure it's enjoyable. And that is why the Garnet is trying to remind you that even with these big, amazing, fresh changes coming towards you, oh, okay, let's zoom in again on the Garnet. Um, it's important for you to ignite your passions, to stay true to your passions, and to never forget what sparks joy and what gets you to jump out of bed in the morning without thinking twice, without needing the alarm to wake you up, because that is really one of the best feelings, trust me. It is sensational when you feel as though you're so motivated to get things done that you just pop right out of bed or even wake up before your alarm manages to get you up. If you've never experienced it, you still can, okay? So don't feel like this is something that has to be alien to you for the rest of your life, not at all. Next up, we have the Malachite. It's a time to transform. So it's very clear here that you're most likely in a situation right now where maybe you're not just hopping and jumping straight out of bed and super motivated to get things done or just maybe it's kind of hard for you some days. So that is where I do see here in the Malachite that it's time to transform and transcend into doing things that make you feel really alive and if you feel like there's nothing in your life right now that makes you feel super alive, like find something, okay? Connect with something that gives you that energy, that drive, that passion to get up, get things done, and not feel tired of life. A crystal that I would recommend is the Carnelian, which just proves that you really connected with it on a deeper level and you made an excellent choice. 
We do still have a few carnelians in my online crystal store, however, um, supply is pretty low right now. So if you want a carnelian, don't say I didn't tell you, <laughs> the Angel Aura balls last time sold out so quickly. So I'm just letting you know right now in case you want one, go grab one now because I'm not 100% sure how many weeks it'll take for us to get the next batch in as this is a rather rare stone to find in such size and amazing quality. So links will be down below in the description box. Next up, we have the green corn moon. So in the green corn moon, I see here that a big change coming towards you is kind of like this feeling of being able to be patient with yourself. And that is maybe something that has been stopping you from getting certain things done or achieving more. Just this impatience, this sense of, oh, I want to like finally get things done or why am I so lazy? Why aren't I able to do the things that I want to do in this and that amount of time? So as soon as you kind of like step Step away from putting so much pressure on timelines and when you're getting things done that's when all of a sudden things start to move really funny isn't it so you seem to be the type of person who doesn't like to be forced into things and the moment when the strain and the moment when the pressure lessens is when you feel inspired which is awesome so lessen the pressure and allow yourself to feel more connected Next up, we have the worm moon. So in the worm moon, I do see here that a big change coming towards you is just this sense of fertility, the sense of maybe for the first time feeling as though you want to give up your life for a cause, okay? So this could be to have children, to have offspring, but giving up being the center of your universe for a cause could be giving it up to foster animals it could be giving it up to help other people in need in different countries and different places in this world in different communities so don't feel like that has to mean like a pregnancy and children and all of those types of things it can of course but it doesn't need to we're not all destined to lead our lives having children you know and it's important for you to know that it's okay and that your self-worth is not dependent on whether you follow those traditions your self-worth your value does not rely on you following tradition to build your own family at a certain age or a certain time or ever actually have children it just makes more sense for you to follow where your heart brings you and follow where your heart is trying to show you the way because there are so many people who I think get in over their heads with children with this idea of a family and then they realize that maybe their passion was never really there or maybe it would have been better if they would have taken it a little slower so don't allow others to pressure you into choices that you can't take back. Next up, we have the fox spirit. So in the fox spirit, I do see here thinking on your feet coming as an next big change that just feeds into opportunity and feeds into your achievements, okay? So just as the fox spirit suggests, thinking on your feet is not only necessary, it is inevitable in this climate, okay? So being successful, getting to the earnings to the freedom getting to the love that you desire will require you to be very quick to really rely on your intelligence if you will and to be inspired by this person that we have here in the queen of swords by this person who has accomplished a lot through just thinking smart and that is not to say that you have to have some type of big degree from a huge world-renowned university you can think quick on your feet and smart and accomplish anything in the world by just being street smart by just using a common sense as well as researching where it makes sense to research next up we have the turkey spirit so in the turkey spirit i do see here that you're being called to give with gratitude and grace that a lot of the changes that are coming towards you are really coming towards you because you're somebody who has a lot of gratitude to share, a lot of gratitude to give, so don't stop that. Your guides are trying to communicate to you that, that those are one of the traits of you. Those are some of the things that people love about you the most. They love how kind you are what type of like judgment-free zone you can be for people to tell you exactly how they feel 
tell you exactly what they're going through. So in Turkey spirit, continue to do so and know that the more you ignite your passions and the more people that you meet along your journey, who you talk to in a very kind way, in a graceful manner, and you always show appreciation for every little thing that they do for you, the more you will really attract development, the more you will really attract opportunities, the more you will attract money, abundance, love, and lifelong friends. And making friends can be hard after a certain age, but we are in this day and age where connecting through the internet with like-minded people is easier than it's ever been. So know that just the way you and I have connected on this beautiful platform called YouTube, um, you can connect with other people as well and eventually forge a relationship where you may become real lifelong friends. You may be able to meet up with them, to spend time with them, and overall just allow your gratitude to extend to the point that it's not only bringing you more friends but also more opportunities, okay? Be brave, put yourself out there, extend the olive branch. So group number two, this is the reading that I received for you in regards to some of the big unexpected changes that are coming towards you. I hope that you found your reading insightful. I hope it resonated. Let me know down below in the comment section what hit home for you and also actually leave a little fire emoji down below in the comment section to let me know that you made it to the end of your reading, the very end. <laughs> so group number two, I'm sending you so much love and light. Thank you for sharing this sacred space with me today and I'll see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello group number three and welcome to your reading. So you chose the amethyst group number three. Let's do a quick close up. I just love the amethyst. It is a stone that connects to your intuition and brings out more of your psychic abilities if you feel like you do have psychic abilities and it's just overall, I mean it's gorgeous. What else can we say? So let's move into your reading to figure out exactly what is coming towards you in correspondence to the amethyst. So metamorphosis. Your next big unexpected change is a metamorphosis. Okay, so profound change, self-awareness, as well as just that type of change at a cellular level where it feels like all of the cells in your body are renewing and are taking on a completely different vibration and energy. In correspondence to the amethyst, I do see that you're being called to be intuitive, you're being called to be straightforward with yourself about what you feel and follow those callings. Don't feel like discriminating or telling yourself, oh, like maybe it's just all in my head. If you feel drawn towards something, it could be, for instance, a new hobby, it could be a different type of lifestyle that is maybe very foreign to your community. Know that there's a reason why you feel drawn to it and that there's most likely a deeper meaning in it. For me personally, for instance, growing up the way I did, becoming a vegan is really so far-fetched and such a far cry from tradition, but you know, I felt drawn towards it. I still made the switch to eating a plant-based a plant-based diet now for over six years, I believe, and it's been the best decision ever. Also spirituality and card readings. Weird, strange for my background, but following my intuition led me to this place. So allow your intuition to lead you to your authentic self and to lead you to things that you enjoy doing every single day. Next up, we have the Thunder Moon. So the Thunder Moon is all about change, big, profound change. So group number three, it seems as though your metamorphosis is really a more um, serious one than in the previous groups that I just read. Your changes are big. Your changes are changes that are going to affect you for the rest of your life. And there's a reason why you tuned into this reading and it is in order to prepare you for these changes and to put you on the right path to motivate you. So let's see what else we have. We have the waning crescent too. So there is a type of resistance here, okay? I do see here in the waning crescents too that you are trying to hold on to your old self and you may not even notice that you're doing it. You may try to self-sabotage certain projects, certain aspects of moving forward of the profound change. For instance, you may be trying to fight against moving on to a different job, a different profession, a different, um, 
study, if you will, but I do see here in the waning crescent two in correspondence to the thunder moon and metamorphosis that there's not really any point in challenging this change. It can be very scary to move into a space that is new to you, that is just very um, complex in a way, that is so different from what you're used to, but at the same time knowing the waning crescent too, that when you resist a lot, okay, when you resist and challenge the inevitable changes that are coming towards you, the profound change that I see here in the metamorphosis, you're ultimately just harming yourself, taking away from the progress that could have been made in the time that you were resisting the inevitable. So don't resist the next big changes coming towards you. Then we have the Chrysocala. The Chrysocala is all about starting fresh, is all about allowing yourself to do things on a fresh slate and maybe even giving certain things up in order to start fresh. So that could be, for instance, giving up items that you no longer need. One of my things on my to-do list actually recently is to declutter 10 things a day. So in 10 days, I will have decluttered at least 100 items that I no longer need to help me on my fresh start because just like you, group number three, I feel like I've been going through profound change through almost like this metamorphosis and first I was in resistance but now I'm trying to comply because I realize that it's so much easier to go with it than to fight against it. Next up we have the Iolite. So in the Iolite you're being called to shift your money mindset. Group number three, what is your mindset with money? You know, what did you grow up believing or thinking about money as a child? And how do you think that that affected you? How do you think that that affects your current reality and your current status? I'm actually really interested to read your story. So leave a little comment down below with, instead of an emoji this time, let me know a little bit about your money mindset and how you think it's affected to do because I can see here in the eye light that change is coming in regards to that as well. If you've always felt like money has to be very hard to come by or hard to make, of course, then that's the reality that you're creating for yourself. But if you shift your money mindset from, for instance, you know, not being able to manage it very well or feeling like it has to be hard to lead an abundance life to feeling like you know how to manage it and educating yourself and understanding that money is only as difficult to acquire as you feel it is, that can really shift you into a place where you not only show up to your work more focused, happier, and just with more motivation, but you do actually see the outcome of this mindset shift in monetary value in a growing bank account. Next up, we have the angelite. So in the angelite, I do see here that you're a lot more supported than you maybe ever thought. So I see here as a big change, people kind of coming to support you, people coming together in your moments of need and in your moments of this profound change. So while you may feel like nobody really gets this change that you're going through, or you may even feel a little bit unsupported in a way, it's essential for you to know that support is all around you and that it's not something that you have to beg for or should have to beg for. And this can be hard to understand if your friend group or family does not get the path that you're on, but that doesn't mean that you don't have support. It just means that maybe the support that you need is not in that realm right now. Maybe the support that you need really lies in a community on the internet or a community that you have yet to discover that really gets you and understands you in a way that certain people in your life currently may not be able to comprehend. Next up, we have the Two of Cups. So the Two of Cups is a really interesting card because it is a card of respect, harmony, and balance in your relationships, but it is also a card that speaks of romantic love. So if romantic love is one thing that you've been searching for, looking for, know that any Two of Cups Part of your big profound change could be that romantic love. I mean, after all, we have 78 cards in here. We have the lover's card and the two of cups that corresponds very strongly with love. What are the quote unquote odds for you receiving that, right? There is a meaning behind you receiving the two of cups and filling up your emotional well in relationships that are mutually beneficial, that respect who you are at the core, and also the respect the changes that you're going through instead of being skeptical towards them or trying to make you feel like you're a hypocrite. Next up, we have the King of Cups. So the King of Cups is somebody who is strong, somebody who has 
leadership qualities and abilities and this is somebody that is coming into your life in correlation to a fresh relationship a new type of love if you will as i can see here in the two of cups However, if you are already in a relationship and that is not what you're trying to attract, then the vibration that you're putting out is going to attract a King of Cups person that shows you how to deal with these emotions. So not somebody who is here in a romantic sense, but somebody who is here in a more type of self-development setting where they can help you figure out exactly how to maintain your integrity, how to maintain your sense of self-love, as well as find a stable way of managing your emotions, managing what you're going through in such a time of profound change in your life and not being so reactive, right? Because when you're reactive to everybody and anything, you give up your personal power. Like for instance, somebody in your family, somebody who's close to you says something really unsupportive that hurts you, that you want to kind of oppose to, especially if they say that you're lying when you're not or they're trying to insinuate that you said something that you didn't, you know, just making up stories that can be so infuriating. I feel you group number three and you want to say something back. But I see here in the King of Cups that this person is going to teach you that reactivity literally just means that you're giving up your power, that you're reacting to everybody's BS where you should be keeping your energy sacred and saving it for the moments in which it really matters and for the things that you're most passionate about, for the things that you truly love. So the King of Cups, look out for them in water signs. You know, I could be your King of Cups, but your King of Cups could be someone whose book that you read that really inspired you, you know, a great author. It could be somebody that you're going to meet tomorrow walking down the street. Either way, they're entering your life within these next few days in form of some type of advice that really helps you calm, relax, and become the highest and best version of yourself to deal with this profound change coming towards you. Next up, we have the armadillo spirit, which speaks of setting healthy boundaries. Let me tell you, the armadillo spirit is one of my faves because it is connected to the number three, as you can see right here. And the number three is a very playful number. The number three is a number in correlation to the armadillo spirit that speaks of setting healthy boundaries but in a really fun and playful way so for instance if somebody is trying to ask you way too many questions like oh so where do you live how much do you make so instead of saying um i don't feel comfortable answering that because i don't even know you i literally met you two minutes ago um instead of saying that being very playful with it and just saying oh well where do you live or well what do you work as how much do you make what's your relationship status like or just saying Oh, it's so funny that you asked that. That's kind of nosy of you. What about you? What are you doing? You know, just kind of like turning it around in a diplomatic and playful way, but not putting yourself in a position where you're the one who's trying to evade the question. Next up, we have the dolphin spirit. So in the dolphin spirit, I see here that in this time of profound change in your life, group number three, of this big unexpected change, I see here that you're coming to an understanding that you are a multifaceted being and multi multiple things can therefore be true about you and your life. So on one hand, you can, for instance, really love animals and love the companionship of animals, but then on the other end, you may feel like humans, uh, not so much. I love all living beings as long as they have you know, four legs. So that is one thing that I see you moving into and becoming more comfortable with, not feeling so much like you're a hypocrite, okay? So you may, for instance, lead a lifestyle where you're trying to create as little pain and waste as possible, but maybe when it comes to a certain brand that's been with you for a long time and they're not 100% eco-friendly, you just kind of think to yourself, well, that's the one thing that I want to indulge in. That's the one thing where I wanna have my cheat day. And it's not about being perfect. And that's what you're understanding here in the dolphin spirit. While you can be very conscious of the way you live life, it doesn't mean that 
you have to be perfect all the time or that if you accidentally mess up by for instance purchasing something on a whim it was a very impulsive but that doesn't mean that you don't care it doesn't make you a bad person I mean, you slip up too. You have times where maybe you're not in the mood to research something to down to the littlest detail to make sure that you're having like the smallest impact possible in this world, the smallest negative impact possible, okay? You can still be a good person, care about the planet, care about animals, care about environmentalism, care about humanitarianism. I mean, the list goes on. So don't feel like just because every now and then you slip up or maybe you just need a day of you and you just, quite frankly speaking, don't care for a day about what you're doing or looking into and it doesn't always have to be productive and that doesn't mean that you're lazy or that it makes you a bad person. So really taking the pressure off of perfectionism. Group number three, this is the reading that I received for you. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it really hit home for you. Let me know down below in the comment section what you related to the most and of course leave a little water drop emoji in the comment section to let me know that you made it all the way to the end of your reading. Thank you so much for sharing this sacred space with me today. Know that I appreciate you. I'm sending you love and I'll see you in another one of my videos. Hello, group number four and welcome to your reading. So you chose the black tourmaline group number four. Let's do a quick close up. I absolutely love this stone. It is a very protective stone. It is a stone that protects you against electromagnetic fields and overall just you know negative vibes so awesome choice group number four let's move into your reading to figure out exactly what big unexpected changes are coming towards you in regards to the black tourmaline so first and foremost we have the hermit so i see a lot of contemplation i see a lot of soul searching so it seems as though the big unexpected changes that are coming towards you are happening very privately for you they're happening in a place where it's really just you and the cosmos it's you and just the universe. So this may be in meditation, coming to an epiphany, coming to enlightenment, coming to a sense of losing this feeling of space and time and being yourself and just overall being in an unknown space, but yet you feel so open, you feel so full of love and you feel as though, you know, there is so much for you to still learn and take in. So really a revelation, really a heart opening, an opening of a portal that you've never been a part of before, okay? So groundbreaking change in a very spiritual as well as personal sense. So this is not something that other people will necessarily be able to witness with you. This is a big unexpected change that is coming from within you, group number four. But let's move further into your reading. Uh, here we go, we have justice. So one thing that I can see here in justice is understanding okay i see here injustice karmic balance i see moving into a place where you understand that while there are a lot of things about life and people that are awesome that are amazing you will every now and then also encounter certain aspects and traits of people that you wish they could have maybe left at the door or not have you so closely associated with furthermore i do also see injustice that you have an understanding for the fact that we're all on a path and we're all in different places. So for instance, for me, when I look back at five years ago, six years ago, the things that were important to me at that point in life, it's changed so much. The public image that was important for me to display, I mean, it's non-existent right now. And if I would have had somebody look at me five years ago and just say like how, early on I am in my path and maybe almost make me feel guilty about it, I may have never been able to come to this point in time today. So understand that you shouldn't judge yourself for where you're on on your path and also don't judge others because you never know how profoundly they're going to change how life is going to instill a different type of mentality in them or how they might just do a complete 180 from the things that once were important to them even if they were superficial to all of a sudden delving a lot deeper and understanding that those things don't matter at all so i want you to know here in justice that give yourself that same benefit of the doubt and don't beat yourself up 
for however much or little progress that you're making. Next up, we have metamorphosis. So group number four, metamorphosis, is all about that big, profound change, that self-awareness. And I do also see kind of like an outer body experience. Let's get the camera focused on your cards. There we go. So in correlation to the hermit and metamorphosis, do you see this outer body type of experience of almost levitating, of almost like moving out of your body into a place where there's no space, no time, you're nobody, you're nothing. And in turn, you become everybody, you become everything. You are a part of this greater awareness, of this greater consciousness. And I really see that you tuning into meditation is a place where you can elevate yourself to that level. Also, yoga is a great practice, especially yin yoga will allow you to drop into this space of profound change, of self-awareness, of really like a spiritual awakening. You may see colors that you can't even describe that don't exist in our, our realm. You may see visions feel feelings and sensations that you've never felt before that are giving you this profound change and this understanding that you know life is really what you make it out to be and we're all on different journeys but one thing that you're clear of that you're sure of is who you are and what you want your life to be okay i see this revelation of understanding what your next steps are and what you want to accompany you on your journey through life what is important to you and letting all of the things that are superficial fall away and coming to a place where you really understand that things aren't as important as what's happening inside of you. Next up, we have the Lepidolite. So in the Lepidolite, I see you recalling your dreams, recalling what's happening during meditation. So write that down, journal it. I've been writing down my dreams, even though um, as of lately, well, as of, I feel like always, I am a bit heavier on the nightmares. Let me know down below in the comment section if you're the same, if you also have more nightmares than you have um, positive dreams or dreams of great ideas. I'm trying to find out why that is for me. So that's why I'm dream journaling. That's why I'm recalling on my dreams. And you may want to do the same, whether you're trying to find out what your nightmares mean, what it means to experience um, scenes that are kind of like dark, or whether you're trying to note down ideas that you know are one of a kind. Next up, we have the Lapis Lazuli. So in the Lapis Lazuli, I do see here that decision-making is a big one. I see that big profound change is coming with you making different choices, and this is in turn changing your life, changing your existence. Just overall, your personal reality is moving into a completely new, different, and um, untouched realm, okay? So this is a place you've never been. This is a point you've never come to in meditation or your journey of spiritual enlightenment and having these epiphanies, these supernatural experiences. So I do see here in the Lapis Lazuli that experiencing this and going through this profound change is really the main motivator of why you're now making more decisions and you're unafraid to make decisions. So procrastination kind of falling away a lot more for you, group number four. Next up, we have the last quarter moon. This immense sense of gratitude is what I see. The sense of gratitude that you've never felt before. The sense of love that is just so all encompassing that you feel as though this is something that you you need every single day so making positive habits a part of your daily life and really moving into them because you want to not because you should so making for instance yoga working out being out in nature is something that you do on a regular basis because you want to because you see value in it so you're making that decision to engage in it because you see just how much gratitude it brings you how much humbleness, how much humility it brings to your life. And you love that, you love that feeling. And that's part of the big change coming for you. Next up, we have the long night moon. So darkness is a big one here. And you may have really resonated with me talking about just um, the nightmare portion here, or overall in the black tourmaline, wanting to protect yourself from energy vampires, from negativity, from influences that sometimes you can't completely avoid, right? Because 
there are certain things such as electromagnetic fields that we can't completely avoid because it's in today's society. It's just weaved into everyday life and you can't escape it. So I do want you to know that owning a black tourmaline as well as a shungite is a great way to protect yourself. Keep it around your devices, your electronic devices. Keep one on your bedside table in order to have that protection while you're sleeping and you're restoring your energy. So I will leave a link down below to a set that I have alongside with the black tourmaline. There is a geode, there is a selenite, I believe, amethyst, so on. There are like tons of crystals within that set. So make sure that you check out that full moon set as it also really corresponds here to the long night moon and the darkness that you're tapping into, okay? The darkness that you are learning to accept as well as release negative emotions towards darkness instead of feeling like you want to erase darkness. You understand that for light to be, there must be darkness. Without it, you know, none of these two things would exist. And also darkness is not always negative. Darkness is not always um, mysterious in a scary way. And darkness is when plants restore themselves. A lot of plants restore themselves. A lot of different species of animals come to life at night. There is a lot of restoration that happens in the human body, a lot of regeneration, a lot of just um, getting energy back, which is an amazing thing, right? It's actually such a positive to have darkness because you need energy to thrive, to live, to do the things that you want to do. Without it, you can do anything. So night and darkness is essential for you to regenerate, to get the rest. So embracing it is what I see as a big profound change for you. Next up, we have the hummingbird spirit. So being here in the now, through this amazing new consciousness that you're gaining, through this spiritual awakening, these epiphanies, it makes it so much easier for you to be here in the now, to really just enjoy this very moment without overthinking, without constantly feeling like, oh my God, I gotta check my phone, I've got to check my emails, I have to make sure I stay connected. I see more of a disconnection for that and more of a reconnection with yourself and who you feel like you've always meant to be, that person that you lost um, after society has kind of set certain intentions into you without you knowing, without your permission, it just happened, but you're coming back to your roots. You're coming back to what was always important to you and the person you were as a child. And I feel like a lot of us are coming to this collective awakening, to this collective expansion of consciousness, of a deeper understanding that we are really all interconnected, we're really all vibration, and I feel as though we are, you know, perfect when we're born, we don't have any preconceived notions, and the older we get, really the more emotional baggage and crap we're just lugging around with ourselves. And when we come to a place of spiritual enlightenment, of meditation, of stillness, we can try to work on that baggage, right? We can start to work on being here, being in the moment and understanding that a lot of things that we were trained to think are important things really aren't. I mean, just look at a child. A child is not going to want to play with a video game instead of experiencing something amazing, right? A child is going to look up at seeing a butterfly for the first time as though it's the greatest thing it's ever seen. And that's when the eyes go up from the screen and they're here, they're in the moment. And it's just way more valuable than what could be happening on the internet, I know. It's very weird for a YouTuber to be saying that. I should be telling you to just stick around and watch more videos. <laughs> just kidding, group number four. Next up, we have the antelope spirit. So in the antelope spirit, I do see here that life is moving very quickly, okay? I do see here that when it comes to the time that you're able to carve out for your spiritual growth and enlightenment, it can feel almost like you're chasing the clock because everything is moving in a way how you want to be able to make more time. But temper yourself and don't feel so pressured 
to do everything so quickly or if you're having some success in meditation or just your spiritual journey don't pressure yourself for that success to have to be exponential and the growth to have to be exponential it happens over time when it's supposed to happen and also you have so much time okay most of my viewership is pretty young still most of my viewers all of you are in a place in your life where you still have decades where you still have so much time to learn so much time to grow so much time for enlightenment for supernatural experiences and to explore more of yourself so don't feel so pressured about this thing that we call time try to just kind of like live more as we have in the hummingbird spirit try to just be okay with the fact that time is something that exists but it doesn't need to um, imprison you okay time is not something that needs to pressure you next up we have the pig spirit so in the big pig spirit i do see here that as a big profound unexpected change that is coming towards you is just how you use your mind okay the ability that you know that your mind possesses i just see you finding a whole new respect for your mental capacity for your headspace for your brain and the powerful machine that it really is right the powerful tool that it is that can completely change your reality your outlook on the world and your outlook when it comes to your existence so that is where i really see that a lot of this eye-opening um, energy is coming from a lot of this energy of profound change of an increase in self-awareness is coming here from using your mind very wisely and to your benefit to bring yourself to a place where you know that if you have your mind in check if you are in charge of your mind then you're in charge of life but if you allow for instance your body or lust or anger or other people's words to be in charge of your mind and what it is that you do then you're giving up power right you're allowing everybody else but yourself to control you which is what i see you moving away from in the pink spirit and just the liberation that comes from it the type of awareness that you're gaining is invaluable and that's something that no book can teach you that's something that nobody can show you or tell you how to do it's something that comes from you experiencing from you putting yourself out there so you should be really proud of yourself for the next big changes that are coming towards you inevitably in group number four which is really an amazing thing and something to be proud of leave a little black heart emoji down below in the comment section if you made it all the way to the end of your reading i do hope that you found it insightful as well as motivational i know i really enjoyed sharing this sacred space and time with you please stay safe group number four and i'll catch you in another video